Hey there, Thomas from Bricks here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can apply a different styling to a specific element state using pseudo classes and how you can apply a different styling to a specific part of an element using pseudo elements. Now I'm mentioning those two technical terms because starting at Bricks 135, you're now able to add pseudo classes and pseudo elements yourself. So I think it's important to at least have a basic understanding of the meaning of those two terms and how they affect the styling of your elements. Um, there's actually a pretty long list about uh, pseudo classes um, and also we have quite a lot of uh, pseudo elements. So we're not gonna cover everything and every possibly available um, pseudo class and pseudo elements, but there are links to um, Mozilla.org articles about uh, pseudo classes and pseudo elements in the video description below that contain a list of all of the available selectors. And in this video for the pseudo classes, we're going to have a look at the hover state. It's probably the by far most popular one. And we'll also add a custom pseudo class, this visited one, to style um, our visited links. For the pseudo elements, we're gonna have a look at the first letter pseudo elements. So we can style the first letter of our heading in a different way. And we are also going to create one pseudo element here for the first line. So we can style the first line of our heading in a different way as well. All right, let's jump right to the builder and start adding our first uh, pseudo class, this hover state that we just talked about. And first of all, we need to select the element that we want to apply uh, this hover state to. And prior to uh, Bricks 135, if I clicked here on this little cursor icon, I would enter the hover state already. And if I clicked it again, I would leave it and I would be back to my normal editing mode. Now, because of the flexibility that we have now with pseudo classes and pseudo elements, when you click on this icon up here, you will actually reveal the pseudo class menu. If you click on it again, you can hide it. So basically this now serves as a toggle. And yeah, it tells me I can select or I can create a pseudo class. We'll start by selecting an existing one. So if I click here, you can see there are three defaults available. And if I enter something here, I can actually create my own. Um, we're gonna explore this in a minute. First, we'll start by selecting the hover state. And now you can see that this one is active. And it's also up here um, is lit up, basically indicating and telling us um, very apparently that we are editing now this hover state. So all of the styles that I'm going to apply now to this image will affect the hover state of this image. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a CSS filter. What I want to change here, I want this image to turn black and white. When I hover with my mouse over it, so I'm just gonna set the saturation to zero. And you can already see here in the preview that this is how it would look like when I hover with my mouse over it. Um, while the state is active, this basically serves as the preview. So I don't need to actually hover with my mouse over this image in order to see the effect that makes the styling a bit easier without having to go forth and back between the preview and the element panel all the time. All right, that's actually everything I want to style here for my image element. Now, if I want to go back to the normal editing mode, I can just simply clear my active uh, pseudo class. And now you can see um, I'm back here in my normal state. And when I hover with my mouse now over my image, you can see that our style is being applied. I also have this little active indicator here, this little counter telling me how many active pseudo clauses this element has. So this is really handy to quickly get an idea um, and to see and inspect um, that this element has active uh, pseudo clauses. And if I click here, you can also see this little indicator here telling me that there's a setting here for this uh, pseudo class, which I can clear simply by clicking this clear icon up here, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to keep my style. But one thing I actually want to add to this element is a little bit of a transition because it's not very smooth right now. It's just very abrupt. Immediately as soon as I hover with my mouse over this image, it changes to black and white. I want to have a little bit of a delay here. So I'm going to add a CSS transition. So I edit my element and then under style CSS, 
a CSS transition, I can simply put in the duration. That's the easiest syntax you can use here. You can also click on this link if you want to construct a more complicated syntax. I'm just simply put a one second duration here. So now if I hover over this image, you can see it has this smooth effect, which takes one second. Normally, I would probably use something like 0.2 seconds. So it's still smooth, but it doesn't take forever. All right, that looks good. And with that, I'm actually already done with this state. Now let's have a look at how we can add more states to this list because we talked about this um, visited state here. So for my links, for my visited links, I want to apply a different styling. So I can add um, this pseudo class because by default that one is not available. Now, how can I do this? So first of all, I need to go to my theme styles because here I can customize the styling of my links. And if I go here, I want to basically show a different um, typography and then a different color, but not for the default state. I want to actually use this for the visited state. So I go up here and now I just simply enter this pseudo class, the one here. Again, if you don't know about those pseudo classes, make sure to visit the mozilla.org link down here. All right, so I put in my single colon and then I type in visited. I need to make sure I type this incorrectly because you cannot rename this later on. So now I save it and now it's also already selected. Now, if I go to typography, color, I can set my link color. Maybe I wanna show this. I just wanna make this obvious here. I'm gonna get this pink. And now you can see that this one is pink. So now I can remove and I can clear the state. It still shows pink because I actually already visited those links um, in this browser. So that's why they show up like this also in uh, by default. But yeah, that's how we just created this custom uh, pseudo class. Now let's have a look at the uh, pseudo elements in the second part of this video. We're actually going to create this first letter state here and then the first line. And we said we want to apply this to our heading here. So I click on the setting and I go here and let's create this pseudo element. Um, you could actually use a single colon. Uh, most browsers, all the browsers will recognize this as well. But in order to distinguish this more clearly, it's actually recommended to use a double colon, which we're going to do. So I'm going to put in the first letter, hit enter, and now I created my um, pseudo element. All right, what I want to do, I want to show my first letter here in a different color. So I go to typography, color, let's make it red. And now you can see my first letter has been styled. I can also apply more styles to it. Let's just say I wanna put in 66. So now you can see also the font size has been updated as well. Okay, and I can clear this and I'm back into my normal editing mode. You can see I have one active style which is this first letter. And then you can see also I have this little indicator here telling me that there's a setting behind this pseudo element. And we can move on to our first line here. Now we're gonna style the first line of this heading by creating this pseudo element. So I go here, double colon, first line, enter, create it, select it. And let's just make it all uppercase. Oh, actually, I'm editing this now here. Um, sorry. Uh, let's remove it. I actually want to apply this to my heading. Let's go here. And first line, uppercase. All right, now you can see this has been applied to my heading, but you could you saw I can also apply this to my text element. And yeah, that's how it looks like now. I have a combination here. My first line is now all uppercase which we just defined right here. And the first letter has a different color and a different font size as well. And that's how you can work with uh, pseudo classes and pseudo elements in Bricks.